What is Project Six Store? That's the question everyone's been asking. Supply chain security, Kubernetes, cloud native, all of these things, and how do they coalesce together? Today, I'm gonna to run you through the project, talk to you about some of the constituent parts, and hopefully you'll be that much closer to understanding what this all means for the future of security. Hi there, welcome. Before we get started on what is SigStore, I wanted to take a step back and look at what is supply chain security full stop? I think a lot of folks have some questions around it. It's unclear exactly where it begins and where it ends. And also, what are the attack vectors? Am I affected? And is the whole thing fraught with danger? Let's just look into this as an illustration and just make sure that we understand what some of the key concepts are here. I think one of the reasons it's confusing is because by calling it supply chain, it sounds like food chain. And food chain very much has a start and end, right? You have the top of the food chain, the bottom. This kind of chain is circular, right? It's more like an Ouroboros. It's more like a virtuous cycle because you'll have developers of code, consumers of code, but those consumers of code also become developers of code, right? So if I'm building an awesome Golang package, I'm also using other people's packages. So I just wanted to clarify that in that software security and supply chain security very much are talking about this ecosystem that's continuous. And that's why the problems that we face are also compounded. Think a few years back to when we had some of the old style exploits in NPM pulling packages. They would distribute out and affect millions of different libraries because that virtuous cycle of libraries reusing and embedding each other. So you've seen that I've drawn these three distinct boxes. Developers, so the originators, the genesis of code, distributors. I'm not talking about movie distributors, although it's kind of the same metaphor in that you're distributing artifacts, trusted hubs on the internet to pull your artifacts from, and users of that technology. In the focus of this video, I'm gonna be pretty simple in my examples, but where supply chain security historically has been very, very easy to exploit are between the joins, right? So let's have a little drawing session here. I'm going to show you what I think are some of the really easy to exploit weak points. So between the developer and the distributor, this could be a Helm chart, it could be an OCI image, it could be a binary, right? There is a weakness here because you are pushing your package, your beloved code to somebody else's hub. That hub could be trusted in the community, but if that hub has been falsely represented and you're pushing your code somewhere else, Somebody else now has your code. That's one entry point. Another way is with open source projects, they can pull your code, right? And they can build it and they can say that they are you. They can make changes that aren't yours. They can effectively fork your repository and they can start serving your software with malicious intent. And remember, software supply chain doesn't always um, imply that the other side of that are bad actors by intent. Provenance isn't purely to sort out bad actors. It is also to make sure that from a government, uh, from a legal point of view, you have the provenance of who produced something. Anyway, back to the example. You have this first weak join. When you're packaging and distributing software, you have the ability for folks either to falsely represent you or to host it in a manner that might be less than legitimate. Equally, as a user, I mentioned that NPM example, it's very easy for one of these repositories to unbeknowingly pull a package that isn't the right one. There are some tips and tricks, I think, that have come out over the past few years for bad actors to inject packages into certain systems and for users to pull those. And so, again, the second big issue here is from the consumption of artifacts in that supply chain. So you can see that just these two joins, they leave a lot of room open for issues. Let's have a real world scenario here. Imagine that I am engineering the next greatest Golang package, as I mentioned. Now that package I'm distributing freely on a software hub, right? Think Debian universe or something similar like that. And somebody else is pulling it in and they want to be able to work with it and they are going to build their business off of that. However, somebody in my team decides that they're going to merge a PR in with their admin rights that puts a Bitcoin miner or some other utility inside of that software. Now, the problem here is that that universe repository that I've had set up for my team, they think that everything's all good. They think that um, because I'm a trusted supplier that I can be trusted to push things out on my own. 
And so my end users consume the latest update and they suddenly have Bitcoin miners in their software. And you think to yourself, well, how could we have worked in a world or a way that we could have stopped this? Of course, there are always going to be PR gates. There will always be automated and manual processes to try and stop this. But fundamentally, we need something more. We need the ability to say that the only kind of artifacts that we are going to be able to deploy out will be those that are signed by the authority of the project rather than an individual committing that SHA. And also, now remember, this is another point about supply chain security, is that it gives you incredible forensic information. So you can also look back to find out who inserted that particular SHA or, and that particular digest will tell you going all the way back in that provenance step. So there are several useful use cases there. Now, it's important to understand that part of the challenge here isn't just that you're trying to block this behavior and that you're trying to build gates and build fortifications. It is also the fact that you're trying to build a bunch of different ways of dealing with this. There are multiple different types of standard out there in the wild. And that is really where we see that projects like Sigstore are starting to make a huge impact on pulling a consortium of different vendors together and saying, hey, how can we tackle this all together? And the answer to that question is Sigstore. It is hosted as an incubating project within the CNCF. What's really great about this is that vendors and end users come, come together and build in public. In fact, one of the key goals on the website is that it's gonna be transparent. It's gonna be driven by the community. When I look at Sigstore, I cannot help but draw a parallel to Let's Encrypt, right? Several different technologies under a standard that effectively enables you to serve out HTTPS certificates, auto-rotation, not having to think too much of it. Same with key management. Imagine if that was just a one-liner you dropped in eventually, and suddenly your supply chain is that much more secure. So the goals are really noble, and it couldn't have come at a better time because the number of attacks per year on supply chain security are going up and up and up. And so having a community effort that is spearheading this is extremely timely. You might have seen that the Kubernetes project has already adopted Sigstore. And that's a huge landmark decision that really signals that a lot of CNCS projects are going to start to take on board this idea of supply chain security really seriously. And that sends out wider waves into the community as well. I can already hear you saying, let's get on and understand how it actually all works. Well, there are three primary components that I'm going to talk to you about today that make up Sigstore. So the first one is cosine. Cosine you might have seen in demonstrations. Cosine is effectively what you can take a Docker image with and you can sign it and you can push it up somewhere, job done. However, we need to also talk about Falsio, which is here on this illustration. Falsio is a certificate signing authority and it's extremely important because this is the next generation of provenance, right? And I mentioned OIDC workflows. I'm gonna get into that in just a moment. And then the last part here is record. And RECOR is really how do you then store and access the attestations for all of this stuff. So let's go through piece by piece. Also, remember, my pronunciation of this, I think, is pretty bad. But unless someone could tell me otherwise, I'm going to keep going as is. So fundamentally, the goal here is a free, short-lived signed certificates, right? And a transparency log that's available for attestation. And all of this can be automated. It's auditable community operated and it just works, right? There shouldn't be any specialist knowledge that is required to get up and running. So what's cosine? Well, cosine, when you run this, you effectively are generating a key pair. I click cosine and I generate key pair and it will create me a public key and a private key. It requests a code signing certificate from Falsio. It will download the container manifest for a registry, generate signatures for those and it will upload signatures and your public key and the OCI manifest object. And then Falsio will create an entry in Raycore. What Raycore does that's really interesting is that it inserts a record into its transparency log with those signatures that it's verified, right? And so the artifacts themselves, the Docker images or whatever it might be, don't go into Raycore. They just go into its transparency log with its digest information and it's attestation. And it's a REST API, so you could even host it yourself and have your own centralized Raycore solution. 
Now, this is possibly one of the challenges that people might pick up on is that, okay, well, it's centralization. I'll talk a bit more about that later on, but effectively, that's why it's being distributed amongst peers in the community who are trusted to have Raycor available as a transparency log. And it's also hosted for now for free by the project. But where does Falsio come into this? And I mentioned it briefly a moment ago. You know, we've got this idea that it's effectively some sort of CA. It does a lot more than that. So Falsio actually will contact the OIDC provider and it will do all of that stuff under the hood with the OAuth uh, workflow, right? So the code signing cert with the key holder's identity will get squashed together and it creates effectively this uh, temporary token that you can work with. I'm not going to go too much into that now because firstly, I'm not an expert at it, but secondarily to that, you can see that these three tools together form an ecosystem and I don't want to misrepresent them. What I do want to tell you though, is that getting up and running is very similar to using Let's Encrypt. There's a little bit you do on your side and most of it is done by the community hosting the technology on their side. I want to show you how Cosign works because that's one of the most critical pieces that you'll be interacting with inside of the Project 6 store ecosystem. So on my right here, I've got my terminal. I have a very simple Docker file that just does the hello world Docker image that I think we've all run before. And I'm going to push this image up to Docker Hub. So we're going to go Docker push, uh, and I'm going to push that up to my Docker Hub now. Okay, there we go. So at this point, I've also got Cosign installed, but I haven't done anything with it. The first thing that I need to do is to generate a key pair. In this particular example, I am going to generate the local key pair with Cosign, right? So I'm not gonna do anything else. I'm just gonna generate a local key pair to give you some of the fundamentals. So if you see Cosign generate key pair right there, let's click through that. First thing that it asks for is a private uh, passphrase key. I'm going to ignore that for now. And the outcome of that is that I have a public key and a private key. And these constituate the parts that are required to sign my Docker image. The next thing I want to do is to look at the cosine sign command. If you scroll up to the top here, you can see some examples on how to use it. So cosine sign, cosine key with the image digest. So I know that my image digest is effectively just my image on Docker Hub. So that is hello six store and two. And you can see what's happening is that because Docker Hub as a registry is compatible, we have hello six store signature being pushed. So that now lives up in the cloud somewhere, right? I've got this idea that that's been signed and there's a few other things that are happening behind the scenes here. But what I wanna show you is that we can now verify that. So if I go to cosign, Verify, again, you'll see some examples on how to use this. You can provide your image name. And this doesn't have to be an image that you've built, mind you, but I will check it uh, against my public key. This could be somebody else's public key that they've sent me over Slack saying, hey, look, I really did build that thing, just so you know. So anyway, I'm gonna grab my public key and I'm gonna verify that this CN Skunkworks Hello6 store image matches my private key, which, which it was embedded with. And what you can see is that the claims were validated and the signatures were verified against the specific public key. And so if we think about what we've just learned and discussed and taken a look into, it becomes very compelling to hear about that Cosign doesn't just support public key pair locally, but also KMS, Vault, many other integrations to allow you to prove identity and to use some sort of private cryptographic key pair. There's also Rekor, which I haven't covered yet, but that lets you search for artifacts, for attestations. And that's really part of that forensic analysis that's so exciting that projects like Sixter are opening up in a big way. Falsio as well works behind the scenes as part of what I mentioned a moment ago and brings all of this together. So you have that CA that's doing issuance now, it's also really important to remember that all of these components are completely open source, right? You can host this just like you could host your own PKI. And what's exciting to me in particular around this 
is that bringing these tools into the command line in a simple way and solving real problems for specifically and perhaps most importantly, container developers, package developers, and everyone in the open source community who wants to contribute something in a positive way is brilliant because we're starting to build this tooling into our supply chain, hence the name. And so you're going to start to see a prevalence of more of this tooling and cosign in particular in the CI CD with verification of images. And again, companies may, may want to have their own transparency logs going forwards so that they can also keep a ledger of what's going on. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it. And this is a particular subject where I'm learning a ton at the same time. So please do like and subscribe, leave me some comments. Let me know if there's anything I was inaccurate about or anything that's changed since the time of writing. And go ahead and try this stuff out because you can start to think about ways that this is useful for your business to start to verify that images are coming from where they say they are. Thank you. Bye-bye.